15 right. 22 left. 15 right. Please open. Please. Oh, no, no, no. Sam. Hi, Marcy. Am I glad to see you? How is Jim? Awful. They make you take a shower. Oh. <laughs> Sam, don't look. Here come the popular girls. Marcy, we have only been here for three hours. How can anybody be popular already? With Tuck and Robin Fraser. Her sister was only head cheerleader. <laughs> Those are her pom-poms bronzed in the trophy case. <laughs> here they come. Should we say hi? Yeah, but don't blow it. Oh. Hi, Marcy. She's talking to me. Hi, Robin. <laughs> Hi. Uh, this is Bonnie and Julia. Hi. 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 Oh, this is Samantha Maselli. Hi. 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 <laughs> Everyone calls me Sam. Sam? Cool nickname. <laughs> come on, let's go to lunch. I am star. Oh, me too. You guys want to come? Yeah, that'll be uh, pretty OK. <laughs> Look, there's Dolores Parkinson. She went to her elementary school. I think they're poor. No, they're not. Her father's a dentist. Yeah, but he advertises. <laughs> oh, and look, she brings her lunch. Uh, I think I'll save my coffee for later. <laughs> oh, awesome. You're allowed to drink coffee? Well, actually, it's not really coffee. It's <laughs> Sam. Uh, brew decaf. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to lunch. Okay. So, uh, where do you live, Sam? Oak Hills Drive. Nice neighborhood. I bet your dad's loaded. Well, he, uh, really cleans out. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Yes, this is she. Oh. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, I'm so excited! Oh, uh, my little girl got her first obscene phone call. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure it'll be fine, but let me talk it over with him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he really is special, isn't he? Oh, oh no. Yes. Well, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> well, so uh, what have I done now? <laughs> I don't know, but I just got the best news about Jonathan. After only one week back at school, the teacher wants him to skip the sixth grade and go directly to junior high. Wow! Oh, this is great. He'll bring home his college friends a whole year early. Oh, Mona. I am so proud of him. I have been grooming him for this for 12 years. Uh, Angela, he's only 11. I know, but I read the classics to him in the womb. I knew he was listening. <laughs> Where would he go, dear? <laughs> Angela, Angela, think about this for a second. Aren't we moving a little fast? Maybe you should think this over. What is there to think about? Any good mother would jump at the chance to give her child a leg up on life. Oh, no. We're not going to hear that old dirge again, are we? Well, Mother, I had the opportunity to go from kindergarten to the second grade, but you didn't think I was ready. I thought you lacked some of the social graces. She kept throwing her dress over her head. <laughs> Oh, yeah? <laughs> You're not the only one with cute knees. Look, Jonathan's bored with his schoolwork. Junior high will be a great challenge. Yeah, yeah, but Angela, he's gonna have to make a whole bunch of new friends. And let's face it, Jonathan's not uh, exactly Spuds McKenzie. <laughs> Do I detect the odor of sour grapes? Sour grapes? What is that supposed to mean? Well, some people's daughters are good students, but then there are other people's sons who are exceptionally gifted super achievers. Well, whoop de doo <laughs> Come on, Angela. All I'm saying is a kid should have a chance to be a kid. Well, you seem to be quite the expert on this. Did you ever skip? You bet I did. I skipped the fifth grade. That's right, huh? Of course, I had to take it over that summer. But... <laughs> Look, I have a breakthrough notion. You probably think this is crazy, but why don't we ask the kid? Hey! Oh, that's a good thought, Mother. It's too bad you didn't think of that when opportunity knocked at my door. Oh, oh my God. Oh, Jonathan! Hey, hey, Angela, now don't push this kid. Let, let him make up his own mind. Give me a little credit, will you? Yeah, Mom? Sweetheart, how would you like to enter a world full of new challenges, new ideas, and endless adventure? We're going to Epcot! <laughs> 
Hi. Samantha, you look beautiful. Does this mean you're going to the prom? Yeah. Jesse should be here any minute. Oh, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> I have something to go with this dress. Uh, my pearls, if you want them. I do. Okay. Will you help me? Sure. Well, you were right all along. That dress is you. And the pearls are you. They go great together. They sure do. Oh, baby, baby. <laughs> hey, Jesse, dressed to kill, huh? <laughs> well, at least to bury. <laughs> Sam, you look... Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> One more wow, you're getting an Italian chaperone. <laughs> Anybody want some keys to a van? Thanks, Mrs. Bauer. You too, Tony. Okay, come on, kids. Have a good time, eh? Have a wonderful time. By the way, Angela... How did you ever find this dress? Well, it was a breeze. Bye. Bye. All right, Jess, be careful. Now drive carefully and be home by dawn. <laughs> <laughs> dawn. I never thought I'd see that. Oh, it's so cute. My drumstick. Oh, sorry, Mom. I've been thinking about it all day. Now, wait a minute. I put the other drumstick in your lunchbox this morning. Oh, yeah, and that was delicious, too. Well, Tony, maybe you should start packing bigger meals for Jonathan. Why don't I just start sending a catering truck to the school? Is that an A I see on that test paper? <sighs> yeah. Do we have any more potato salad? Wait, wait a minute. I, I gave you a whole bunch of potato salad this morning. Oh, yeah. The teacher wrote a note. Excellent work, well thought out, perfect margins. <laughs> Who's stealing your lunch, Jonathan? Stealing? Well, they didn't actually steal it. See, one of them pinned my arms down, and then the other one took it. Oh. Sweetheart, who did this to you? Well, Monday, Brian took it. Yesterday, it was Greg, and today, Cynthia. <laughs> Cynthia? She's not big, but she's mean. <laughs> Why didn't you tell us this was happening? I'm calling your teacher. Oh, oh, no, Mom. No, Don't no, no, no. Angela, he, he's right. He's right. There's nothing worse than a squealer. Well, then I'll go down there and have a word with those little hooligans myself. You know, Angela, there is one thing worse than a squealer, and that's a mama's boy. Well, this mama is going to get to the bottom of this. Now, Jonathan, honey, do you, do you have any idea why they could be picking on you? It beats me. They all know how gifted I am. I told everybody. <laughs> Maybe it's just they're jealous because I'm the only kid with the designer briefcase. Jonathan, if you want to make friends, it's not a good idea to go around telling everybody you're gifted. Yeah, hey, Jonathan, that's like that's like bragging about how rich you are. Uh-oh. <laughs> Jonathan, you know better than that. But I don't know what else to say to those guys. I don't think I want to be in junior high anymore. Jonathan, honey, that doesn't sound like you. You have never been a quitter. But, Mom... You're going through a period of adjustment. And in the meantime, you know, you just stay away from the rough boys. And Cynthia. <laughs> Do you know what you need? You need a friend. You see, you, you go up to somebody, pick out somebody who looks like a good conversationalist. You introduce yourself. You tell them a few witty anecdotes. And before you know it, you'll have plenty of friends. You, you have anything you want to add, Tony? Yeah, dump the briefcase. Good morning! Oh, hey, mother. mother, wait until you see Sam. Tony, those clothes you bought her are absolutely adorable. Now, wait a minute. Are we talking sixth grade adorable, or are we talking junior high adorable? Because she's going to be a teenager in two weeks. 
Definitely junior high. Okay. You know, because I really wanted to fit in. She will, Tony. Not like Angela, who spent her first day in the seventh grade hiding in her locker. Mother! Was not hiding! The ninth graders locked me in there. <laughs> oh, not that that's gonna happen to Sam! Of course not, Tony. They only do that to nerds with cooties. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Surprise! Happy birthday, baby! Dad, you know about this the whole time? Ah, uh, what can I say? I'm a party animal, hey? <laughs> Your dad planned the whole thing single-handedly. Of course, he did confer with the world's greatest living authority on slumber parties. Me. Okay. <laughs> Come on, Tony, let's go make room in the freezer. For what? The first girl that falls asleep gets her bra frozen. <laughs> or in Bonnie's case, her undershirt. Oh, real nice bra, Ben. Hey, Mona, I really appreciate you helping me with this, because, you know, I wanted to fit in so bad. <sighs> Moan, Moan, don't you think that's an awful lot of room just for a bra? Well, you never know, Tony. The first person to fall asleep may be me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, in that case... And Robin Frazier's sleeping bags on your floor. I know. It's just one thing. She thinks that my dad's loaded. Don't worry, because it won't come up. Ooh, real bean ceilings. Nice house. What does your dad do? OK, so I was wrong. My dad, uh, he's terrific. What does your dad do? Oh, he's a congressman. But he made most of his money in the private sector. Oh, great. What does your dad do? I'm not really sure, but he won a Nobel Prize. <laughs> so, what did you say your dad does, Sam? Well, uh, he's a big success in... in advertising. Yes, oh, in advertising. Really? He's the president of Wallace and McQuaid. Really? It's the 12th Jeez. largest advertising agency in the country. Oh, oh my. It's great. Yeah. I got a surprise for you. It's an old high school friend, someone from your not-too-distant past. See if you can recognize this voice. We first met in the sixth grade. I cut in front of you in the milk line. You shoved me to the ground and called me a big chowderhead. Oh, I wonder who that could be. It's me, Bonnie. I'm the big chowderhead. Hey. Hi. Oh, hi. Hey. hey, Bonnie. Oh, it's good to see you. But, Bonnie, you got 10 minutes because Sam has to hit the books. Oh, don't worry about that, Mr. Maselli. I think that education is the second most important thing for young people today. <laughs> Okay, Bonnie, what's the first? The first what? Hmm. <laughs> We've missed you, Bonnie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ten minutes, girls. So good to see you. I know. How are you doing? What's going on? How's old Fairfield High? Well, uh, the best part is that I get out every day at noon. I've got an easy load, senior year, not much homework. It's okay. Okay, that sounds great. Why did I ever skip my senior year? I miss you, Bonnie. I miss, I miss all the guys. How's JJ and Gina? Find out for yourself, there's a party tonight. Come with me. There's gonna be a guy you used to like there. Michael Graham? And he asks about you all the time. He does not. Does he? Yeah. <laughs> it's really obnoxious. <laughs> I can't. I told my dad I was gonna stay home and study. Besides, I'm, I'm still a little bit sick. You look fine to me. I know, but I have a term paper to do, three finals to cram for, and all this reading. Oh, what the heck? Come on, let's go. All right. Okay, now, uh, go downstairs and tell my dad that I'm taking a nap, and I'll use the old escape route, and I'll meet you downstairs. Oh, it's gonna be just like old times. You and me together, the three musketeers. <laughs> Jake! Angela? Whoa. You went from a walrus to a fox. <laughs> Thank you. You look exactly the same as when you graduated. Uh, I didn't graduate. I decided to pursue my other interests. Oh, like what? Uh, sleeping late, hanging around, and uh, bumming. Yeah. <laughs> nice work if you can get it. <laughs> well, I'd love to stay and kick it around with you folks, but me and my band gigging down the mason jar tonight, so uh, we really ought to hit it there, Angie. Oh. Okay. Um, the mason jar. Wait, isn't isn't that the place where you used to play back in high school? Same bar, 
Same band, same three chords. <laughs> uh, Angie, uh, dear, could I have a quick rap session with you before you peel out? Excuse me, I'll just be a minute. <laughs> So you're a housekeeper, huh? Yeah. Well, that's my gig, Jake. <laughs> call me Snake. You got a nickname, Tony? Oh, yeah. Uh, call me Broom. Broom. <laughs> <laughs> Mother, what are you talking about? You're being ridiculous. Angela, I know men. You don't. So you are out of your league. Mother, this is all perfectly innocent. No, Angela, you are perfectly innocent. He is a snake. I don't want you going out with that sleazy rider. Wait a minute. Are you forbidding me to go? Forbidding you? Yes, I guess I am. Oh, that's wonderful. Now I can cross number 11 off my list. <laughs> Defy mother. Wait, come on. <laughs> oh, Jake, I'm ready to feel the wind through my hair. Your brain bumper. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Angela. Yes, Tony. Whatever you do, keep your feet on the pegs and lean into the turns and hold on to his uh, luggage rack. <laughs> Angie, your hog awaits. Later on, Mrs. R. Later, broom, keep sweeping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, later. <laughs> I don't feel good about this. Angela has turned into a motorcycle mama. Oh. <laughs> come on, Mona, come on. She's going to be fine. Ooh, hope she doesn't come back with a tattoo. <laughs> Sam, we have to talk. And don't, don't hold Freddy like that, please. <laughs> now look, look, Sam, the thing is this. <laughs> Sam, when you moved out to college, I, I felt very empty. I mean, I didn't even know how empty until, until you came back home. As you mean... Having you here makes me feel all, all warm and, and happy and, and complete. Mm. Oh, I'm happy to be here too, Dad. Good. Now get out. <laughs> what? That's right, Sam. Hit the bricks. Take your shoes for a walk. You've been hiding out here, Sam, and, and, it's, and it's no good. I know. You know, I'm just so mad at myself. I mean, I thought I was this big, strong, independent person, but... Now it turns out that I'm not. Well, well, who is, Sam? I mean, who is? I mean, everybody gets knocked down once in a while. And, and, and let me tell you, it's, it's good sometimes to take the eight count before you get back up. But it's time for you to get back on your feet. I mean, a ref's counting. Nine, nine and a half, nine and three quarters. I'm up. Mm. Dad, it's just so, so warm and cozy here. But you're right, it's... Time to get back out there in the cold crew world and deal with the, the rainstorms and the cars breaking down and the, the fights with Matt and the three finals in one day. Dad, don't make me go! Stay as long as you want, honey. <laughs> no, I've got to go. Yeah. yeah, you got it. You got it. Let's, let's use the door this time, okay? Can you come in, please? He's next. You're first. All right, all right. Now, Angela, look, don't think of this guy as a principal. Think of him as a man who earns less than you. Go ahead. Mr. Krebens, it's very nice to meet you. I think it's very important that parents and educators work together, and I welcome this opportunity. It's who's he? Oh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm Tony Maselli, sir. Uh, I'm her housekeeper. <laughs> yeah, and he also helps me take care of Jonathan. He does a very good job. You see, I think it's important for a boy... <laughs> Ms. Bauer, we have a big problem. I'll come right to the point. Your son, Jonathan, is causing a lot of trouble at our school. Um... Could, could you be a little bit more specific? I could be a lot more specific. I'll read you some of the highlights. Throwing water bombs at the crossing guards. Snapping girls' brassiers. <laughs> All right. 
You find that laudatory, Mr. Masselli? Uh, no, no, Mr. Krebs. It's just that, you know, I mean, every guy did that kind of stuff when he was a kid. You know, hey, I snapped my share of bras, didn't you? <laughs> I guess not. Moving right along, forcing a hall monitor to pretend he's a horse and using him for transportation. <laughs> and my personal favorite, mooning the girl's gym teacher. You mean my son actually exposed his little... Angela, yes, that's what it means. <laughs> well, Mr. Crevins, I'm, I'm so glad you brought this to my attention. I, I will make sure that Jonathan understands that this kind of behavior is positively unacceptable, and I'll forbid him to see that boy Walter. You know, Walter. Uh, the, the mumbler. Mrs. Bauer, <laughs> I had a long talk with Jonathan this afternoon, and it seems the problem goes a lot deeper than Walter. In fact, it might be traced directly to you. Oh, hold on here, Mr. Crevins. Angela Bauer never mooned anyone in her life. <laughs> I mean, Thank you, Tony. Well, well, you know what I mean. I mean, she's a she's a great parent and a great mother. In fact, if I was to have a kid today, right now, I would want her to be the mother. Tony, that's so sweet. Well, I would. Well, you would be a great father. You think so? Well, I, I, I know, do. I, I, I have a few thoughts. <laughs> would you two like me to leave? <laughs> Mrs. Bauer. Your son desperately wants to please you. He knows you want him to be popular and have a lot of friends. But from a child who's just skipped an entire grade, those are very high expectations. Almost too high. You see what he's doing to try to fit in. I... I see. All right, now look, Angela. Don't worry about this. This is not the end of the world. We're in this together. We'll work it out. He's right, Mrs. Bauer. You obviously have a very good relationship with your son. Yeah. And a very interesting one with your housekeeper. 